Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. I'm your host, Jake Hogan. And ignore the song, Be Alone With Me. I'm uh, not as horrible as I sound. I'm certainly not as uh, sexually predator-ish as the, as the title of the show makes me. Honestly, if you know me, uh, you'd think that it was uh, just a, a horrible thing that uh, Jake Hogan would never be uh, accused of that kind of thing. But since you don't know me, some of you, take my word for it. I'm a nice guy. Um, anyway, today on Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan, we have a very special guest. Uh, my son, Charlie Hogan, is going to be here to tell me all the things I did wrong to him in his childhood. He's 22 now. He's been able to sort of accumulate a lot of uh, bitterness and anger, and it's going to spew out at me uh, nonstop in a rage of torrent for the next uh, hour. So I think you should stay tuned and hear that because it's going to be really bad. Actually, no, I just asked him to tell me some things that uh, that I could have done better as a dad because uh, I want to know. I want to know how I did. I want to actually, I'm still a dad. I'd like to be better as a dad. So it's a, it's fair, fair question. Uh, he'll be here with that. And uh, I have a question that I'm going to talk to him about. The show is all about me talking to my guests about things that are bothering me. One of them is my anxiety of the future. I don't know where the future is going. And who better to ask than a 22 year old who thinks he's going to be a musician about anxiety of the future? We'll talk about all that and more. If you want to comment or question, I do we do listener mail, please write in your questions to dbawjaykogen at gmail.com. Uh, and I will answer your questions. And uh, while all that is taken down and the business is out of the way, let's get ready for our big new guest, Charlie Kogan. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. All right, so... Here we are uh, with my special, very special guest, uh, one of the uh, top musicians in my in my Spotify, <laughs> uh, my son Charlie Kogan, who is incredibly talented musician. He's an incredibly talented writer, just a writer of writing things. Um, he's a very uh, interesting guy and uh, somebody who. Part of me regrets that he's my son because I'd like him to be my friend. But since he can't, since I'm his father, I can't be his friend. I have to be his father. But someday, in some reconfiguration of reincarnation, I would just be like to be his buddy. Um, but that's 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 not for this lifetime. This lifetime, I get to be his dad, which is pretty good too. That's just all separate. So, Charlie Kogan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for being here. You're uh, uh, a very brave young man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, uh, so, so, Charlie, um, you're 22 years old. You're a student at. Yes. When's my birthday? Uh, August 5th. <laughs> okay. 2001. Just making sure you know. Okay. okay. Well, I, I confused it the other day. I thought it was August 8th, which was your bar mitzvah day. Okay, that's not my. Okay, that's not my bar mitzvah. Well, when's, it, when's, was, when's, it was September 6th. Uh, September 6th. Yeah. Okay. So, no, September. It, it was. It's also Nana and Papa's anniversary. It's like a. It was a special day. Okay. Yeah. Is that really your permits for day? It was September yeah, 6th? September 6th. Huh. Okay. It was during the school year. So I'm, that bad, could, I'm bad with dates. All my friends could all right. be at the party, you know? So uh, uh, anyway, so, so so you're 22 years old and um, you, May 8th was my permits for day. That's the, that's what I'm confusing. Ah, okay. May 8th was my permits for day. Yeah. Uh, 22 years old. You're a uh, international relations student at Stanford. Um, you're heading into your senior year. Super senior year. Super senior year, uh, which means that you should be a, should have already graduated. Yes, I should have already graduated. Cool. Well, since as you know, I took time off. I was I was on the I was on the couch for <laughs> right during COVID. For, most for of most COVID. of COVID. Um, do you feel that you're behind schedule then? A little bit, not like a ton. I think when I'm at school, I don't feel like I'm behind schedule because there are a lot of people in my boat. Right, but I feel like. I have a lot of friends from high school and from otherwise that are already graduating and going out into the world and doing their own thing. Do you think th taking this fifth year, which really is a fourth year, but fifth year is in a way just delaying the inevitable or was it just, or was it just like you could both, both delaying the inevitable or just squeezing the most out of the college experience? I think it's a little bit of both. I think I intended to squeeze the most out of the college experience because it felt like I wasn't really getting as much as I could have been out of my Zoom classes. Um, but I feel like since I made that decision, it feels a little bit like I'm avoiding the inevitable. Right. Like, I think that's a byproduct of wanting to squeeze the most out of my college. 
th- that leads me to my kind of my issue that I'm ha- having that I wanted to discuss with you. One of the, the, the your issue with me as a well, as I have many son. issues with you as a son. <laughs> okay, many many issues with you, but okay, I'm not, let's not, air out those not here to not here to, to roast you particularly, but but. Um, just as I approach, I'm 60 years old. As I'm looking to the, looking into my career, laying out in the a pathway, and also just life laying out in the pathway. What's going on? You know, there's a certain trepidation about what the future holds. I don't know. I started out in show business doing one thing, and the thing that I was doing kind of doesn't exist anymore. Like the multi-camera sitcom does not exist anymore. Um, not that that's the only thing I did, but I did that a lot. I do single cameras and I do movies and other things, but but showbiz has definitely changed. Broadcast television, which w- I worked on almost exclusively, is seems to be dying. That uh, streamers were alive for a brief moment; they also seem to be mm. collapsing and dying. Um, then uh, you know, cable is people are cutting the cords. There's like what entertainment is is very unknowable. So I have a little bit of a fear of the future. So you're presumably going to be a musician or at least try your hand at being a musician. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And you also have potential to do many other things. You're also a talented writer and maybe someday you'll try your hand at being more of a writer. Uh, You study international relations so that maybe you'll be going into the spy business. I don't know what what, what happens yeah. with the international. Yeah, the CIA sends me, uh, or they send like they send recruitment emails through the right. IR uh, international relations mailing list at Stanford. So if I can do anything with this podcast, it's blow your cover so you're never a spy. Yeah. At least I'll have done that. But I can be like um, I can be like Val Kilmer in Top Secret. I can be like a a singing musician spy that infiltrates like North Korea or yeah, something. Yeah, I think I honestly think that. Uh, that that's a great great use of all your skills yeah uh you know your Actually, language skills yeah. of language skills of uh yeah, I musicianship guess russian yeah but i, I don't know maybe maybe korean you is can next learn, on the you'll learn korean it won't take you that long to learn korean i don't know we'll see uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you really wanted to so uh but do you have trepidation about your future yes and how do, and, and how do you and and how well i get that but how do you not let the anxiety of that future sort of stop you in your tracks i think i mean yeah it's something i definitely struggle with i mean i think it's hard still while i'm at school um because i think i still feel like i have to finish that whole thing up um and not to not to just refer to like my lovely college experience as that whole thing but i don't know but it's but it definitely feels a little bit of like a detour departure from what i plan to do career wise okay um which i've kind of struggled with because uh, I have friends that go to m- musician friends that have gone to music school right. and they're kind of baked into that world already. It seems like in some ways that I'm not. Well, um, I mean, how hard? Let's stop it. How hard would it be to for you to bake yourself into that world uh, just by entering it? Yeah, it wouldn't be that hard. I, I, I don't think it would be hard. But I think I, I know some of those people already. Right. But it still feels a little bit like they've kind of been in this environment where they've been razor not razor focused laser focused right. on the things that they want to do and so and they've been studying that and pursuing that right. and kind of developing professional connections right. through college in a way that i might have been if i were studying like cs or something right. computer science at stanford um or like if i were if if i were if i wanted to be a software engineer like i would be interacting with people that work at big companies and things that right. might be recruiting me right out of college right um, but i mean software engineer is a specific skill that you would have had to learn you are learning and have been learning the skills of a musician and about producing and other yeah. things by doing it yeah so you have that what you don't maybe have is the networking end of that or the you know the 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 community that people might get from going to the berkeley school of music or whatever that is that but it seems like that's a world that you can enter pretty quickly yeah. just by schmoozing with the right people and saying, I'm here too. Yeah. And, and let me work for free. Yeah, <laughs> let me, for sure. let me help you out in this thing. Let me help you out in this yeah. thing. Suddenly you get known in those ways. Yeah, for sure. I, I guess that's, I guess that's so not so much what I'm stressed about. I guess I'm also anxious just about like, how do I make money doing right. the thing I like? Right. That's also a little bit anxiety inducing for me. Cause I think 
I don't know. You're probably like, the, I don't know. The WGA is on strike. SAG is on strike mm -hmm. because they're not getting paid enough. Right. Like musicians can't even like unionize in the same way as the writer. Not can't, not that they can't even, but like they don't like there. There, there is a musicians right. union. There have been many, many attempts at <laughs> songwriters union. Yeah. And the powerless musicians union and yeah. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I and and they're yeah. Performing rights organizations are great, but they're not the whole right deal. I, I think. Yeah, but just sort of, I don't think there's as much money in what I want to do, particularly like with songwriting, with like so what's production. Your, so what's your worst case scenario? Like, like imagine you get out of school and you have trouble making money. What's what? What does that future look like? Uh, that that future looks like I don't know. I'm probably going to be living with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Okay, but all right. But I mean, I'll, but, but, I'll do more laundry. Huh? Right. Okay. Um, but no, I, you're, <laughs> I think your mother. That's like that's that's the optimal future for your mom and me. I'm like, yeah. hey, we get to have Charlie around. But but I mean, yeah. Honestly, but like, I think, like, well, how would you make a living if you couldn't make a living writing and producing yeah. songs? If that weren't yeah. going to happen, which I think it will happen, but if it weren't yeah. to happen, what? I think I would sort of give myself a time frame to sort of to reach certain benchmarks i mean i don't know if that's right but i i think that i i've heard of some people that were like oh if i had, if i can't get anything in like five years like i'm gonna quit the business right. or like I, i've heard some of those stories but i think i, I mean, could, but would you teach music would you would you i could i also just might pivot career directions right. at that point i like i don't know i studied international relations i could maybe right. try to enter that world again i could maybe try to and you like could do anything with international right. relations. No one knows what that is. Yeah. So you can go into any business at all. Yeah. I, I think the, the IR department also has trouble <laughs> right. defining what it is because right. I've, I've taken like, like the most random classes that count towards my major. Right. It's almost like having a scrimshaw major. Yeah. Like we're a major, like, what, what do you do? What well, we whittle ivory. Well, why? Don't ask. We're just going to do it and then see where it goes. I don't know. I feel like uh, I think well, whittling ivory is very specific. I feel like international <laughs> relations is right. very broad. That's true. So That's I think true. like it's sort of like, oh, I'm majoring in milk. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, or right. it's like I'm majoring in world. Sure. Yeah, sure. And I, I think you'd, you'd be a good world major. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So 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 worst case scenario, you you make a pivot at some point and then the the anxiety comes from maybe I'm pivoting too soon. If I had given it a few more years, yeah. maybe I would have done done made it or uh, maybe I'm uh, pivoting too late and I should have switched gears and something else sooner. Is mm. that right? Yeah, there will probably be some of those fears and worries right. as well. I mean, I, I honestly don't think I think I don't know if I feel like in order to sort of fill one need, I might be sacrificing another. So everything's a loss, right? Yeah. Everything is a loss. Like wait, any choice is loss. So you gain something and you lose something. If you choose to stop being a musician, but being something else, maybe you get the gain that new thing, but you lose that other thing. Right. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. but that's every single choice. Yeah. So that's okay. I mean, yeah. um, I, I think you, I take comfort in the idea that, that if I step out and I fail, I can switch gears. Like you're saying, I can, I can move, I can change. Um, and if I like it, if I step out and I fail, but I like what I'm doing, I can continue going down that road. If I'm getting some positive feedback, but not making, you know, big bucks or something. I'll see where it can take me. That's that's good too. I, lucky for you, um, I think that that your mom and dad both were writers, and we know it's like this sort of struggle to try and get to do your passion to your thing. Yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of parents don't know that feeling and would worry. Yeah, uh, I have very little worry. But I feel like that. I don't know because you and mom were both people that followed their dreams to pursue careers that they actually loved. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's liberating, but also scary at the same time, because it's like I don't have any pressure on me to be like a doctor or a lawyer or a, an art or whatever, like whatever <laughs> the, the sort of like stable job. Like I don't have you don't you don't have any moral authority <laughs> to right. tell me what to do or what not to do. So why is that a problem? Oh, it's, it's scary. It's like it's scary that it's just like, what do I do if there's kind of no 
uh, boundary of if the possibilities are yeah. wide open, you know. So do you think if you're if you're at a musician friend of yours and their parents were like dismissive of their musicianship and said, we want you to become a retailer, right? You know, we want you to open a store and, and, and become, a uh, you know, open a Starbucks. We think that's what your career should be. You think that guy's luckier? No, I don't think that guy's luckier because I think that person clearly has more of a will to pursue the thing that they want to pursue than maybe I would. I feel like yeah, something I, if to you, fight if against? You, yeah, I think okay. that like and if they're still studying music despite their parents right. saying insisting that they be a doctor or a lawyer, like ah, that person has more of a it's proof of passion. Yeah. You're looking for proof of passion. Uh, maybe. That's interesting. I, I don't know. I think like I, I feel like I would be a little more I would give in a little more easily to your demands if, if it were like right. If I said you couldn't be a musician, I'm taking away all your music, and now you have to be, you know, you have to be international relating. What? Uh, not, that's what you went to school for. You've got to find a job in it. You you'd give in to that? I mean, I, I think I would be a little upset. I think I, would, <laughs> like, I think I would maybe like not like. I mean, I love music. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I feel like. Like I sort of did study this thing that I do like a lot, right. and I feel like I could maybe work in. Like I don't know. I, I, like if I if I absolutely had to, right? No disrespect to any of my professors that right. may be listening to the, to this conversation. I think, I think the groupies but, in international relations is not as good as the groupies in music. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, some of the ambassadors are pretty cool. <laughs> you never know. Okay, I yeah. guess that's true. Diplomacy yeah. has its uh, yeah. advantages, I suppose. Um, but I don't know. I think that. Just the nature of who I am, I think I would probably be more willing to listen to what my parents had to right. and say maybe or tell me. Because I know that about you, I'm not willing to sort of impose that. Like I, I would rather you find your your own dream and voice, and 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 I want to be rooting for you to pursue it rather than me lay out a course that you would follow begrudgingly. Uh, you know, that's that's. Uh, that it's like, what would you, I mean, I guess the answer is like, if you were your own father, what would you do? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, like, I think. How would, how would you handle you? Mm, I don't know. I think like, I would probably like encourage me to. Would you be more demanding of you? Like would you say, hey, if you want to be a musician, I'm going to expect you to do X, Y, and Z by this time. Maybe. I mean, like, I would, I feel like I would want a father who says those kind of things, but not actually like follow th up on it. Like, right. Okay. I don't know. All right. I mean, I, but I don't, but do you do you? I don't want to. I'm going to do me. I'm just interested. You're a smart like, guy. Like, listen, you're a very smart guy and it's a guy by who I respect. So I, I think you have a good perspective. Yeah. No, I feel like I, I feel like it's, it's good to, to some extent to have that voice in my head, but I don't think that that should be the end all be all. Like, I don't, Interesting. I think like, I should hear some people being like, oh, you got to like, you got to put out an album by such and such time. Right. Uh, like, not that they expect me to necessarily, but just mm -hmm. like, I feel like some some type of motivating force in that way right. might be helpful. Right. Well, I mean, I have laid down certain per parameters that I think are very important for you, but I mean, and not that I've, I've got to hold you to it, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that at, at Stanford, while you're studying international inter, international relations, it's I think it's important in some of your mom that you gig, that you play music, you play your music, that you spend as much time in front of an audience developing those chops because your musician musical skills are great, your songwriting skills are amazing, and your performance skills are fresh. So so like you need still need to figure out how to do that. You're doing better at it. You do more of it, but the more you do, the better you get at it. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's, true. that's, that's, we, we think that who that's, you, who are you calling fresh? <laughs> you, that's, isn't that your, isn't that your hip hop name? Fresh Kogi? Uh, uh, stay tuned for, for some of my new releases. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I uh, so it also leads me to this other question that I had for you, which is, it sounds like you don't have and my first question, which is you don't have incredible anxiety about the future. You have some, I, I mean, I do, I, but, like, I also just feel like, I don't know, also climate change is scary. Like, there, right. there, I have, like, sort of mega anxiety about the future, but I feel like I don't have as much anxiety about kind of finding my right. thing in what do you the do world. With, what do you do with the mega anxiety about the world at large, specifically all the stuff you can't control? It's not in your hands. I mean, yeah. you can be proactive as much as you want to be, but yeah. 
I think at that point I, I just focus on what I whatever it is I need to do, like sort of whatever I envision for myself in the future. I mean, like the world be what the world like the world be what it will. Mm -hmm. Just sort of what do I want for the future? Um, and like as long as it doesn't like actively hurt or harm <laughs> the rest of the world. Well, what um, what are, what is your your uh, top? Ang anxiety what's the what's the type of anxiety on your list of just the world world at large like here's we're staring down at the a, uh, the ecology getting destroyed the environment yeah. getting destroyed we're staring at possibly democracy yeah that's floating away yeah that's scary too um the economy uh a middle class economy being impossible to live through yeah i mean well, i feel like the middle class economy being impossible to live through is something that an anxiety that I feel like might directly affect more of my future. Right. Like, cause I don't know at some point, like, so, cause I feel like there isn't really as much of like a, an artist middle class as there once was. Right. Um, and like people, yeah, like people aren't really like people have to support themselves in many ways right. in order to sustain a career as an artist. True. Um, so, but do you yeah. think having, how can you do, can you be doing something proactively to protect yourself in a world where, you just don't know what's yeah. happening. Like, is there something you should be yeah. doing? I mean, I suppose you, like organizing feel like, I don't know, like, I guess I, uh, I don't know. I mean, well, climate change is just scary. I feel like at right. that point, just kind of got to advocate for change where you can. Right. Uh, that, that one is the most, I think that's the most scary to me because I think with that, like that affects all the other stuff too. Like if we don't have a, a livable world in right. however long time then right. like, it's who, hard to worry about your yeah, middle class to, lifestyle yeah. if, the, if the world is burning yeah or hard to worry about uh, democracy or i mean well, i guess well you'd still worry about democracy too but yeah i don't know but yeah that's scary i think at that point you just kind of have to like I, I guess just i don't I, I don't know what you do like organize Okay, yeah, well, maybe, but like I, get together with people and yeah. advocate for change. Organize, find find like minded people, figure out ways to help the environment, and figure out ways to encourage other people to sort yeah. of help the environment and make sure your yeah. the things that you do are as environmentally sound as yeah. they can be. It's not that one man can change anything, yeah. but one one person as an example can yeah. change things right yeah. so and also uh, yeah. advocate yeah can move the needle yeah. like a little bit and and career wise like if if there's no way to make a middle class living it turns then build a business where you can make a middle class living doing something and still pursue your passion yeah. find a way to combine your skills yeah. or your the things yeah. that you love and maybe you'll break the yeah. ice for other people yeah, i think that if, if actually going back to the thing about pivoting uh career wise like if i don't like if for whatever reason like sort of working as a as a musical artist as a songwriter as a producer what like if that doesn't work out like i would probably develop some other kind of related business that might be something i i think about such as i don't know like okay developing uh maybe like studio like l sort of renting a studio or like le lease like leasing a studio out to people right. or like something like that or Sort okay. of providing space right. for people to to work do, to work and right. like I don't know if I could make if I could find a way to like to make that to make, make money make here's some make here's money. a space that people can't afford to pay you for, <laughs> and then you'll find a way to make it maybe you'll take a cut of their profits or something yeah, and then on the back end maybe yeah. you're, you'll be uh, like a uh, a yeah. a, a an, like, an angel although I kind of do feel like that's a little bit. Uh, like I feel like I feel like a lot of artists don't like those people. <laughs> no, of course you'd be that so, you'd be that other person. But, I, don't, I, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to be the schmuck who does that. No, but, but providing a service but, to allow them to do their yeah, thing. But, but I don't know. But I but I would I would genuinely want to like help other artists. Like I don't think I would want to be like I don't know. Give me the give me the moolah. Like no, I don't know. You know you would have to make a living in order to keep your space open in order to help yeah. other artists. So it's like okay. there's there's give and takes. Yeah, I don't know stuff. Yeah, these are good questions. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in five years. I don't know if I'm going to be writing TV shows. I don't know if I'm going to be uh, exclusively hosting these ex luxury podcasts, <laughs> and have I'll have a stable of shows yeah. on, on many different topics. Because uh, I am an expert at many different things. I, don't know, I was surprised how well like um, you were able to converse about jewelry the other day with uh, 
Uh, oh, Julian's uh, girlfriend. Julian's girlfriend. Yes, I have a mutual friend has a son named Julian who has a girlfriend who works at a jewelry store. But I'm part of being a writer, you know, is observing life and trying to sort of, you know, yeah. get, talk to people and ask them questions about their world. Yeah, I don't so. know, but I guess I was, but I feel like you you knew a surprising amount to begin with anyway, yeah. just like more than I would have known. Well, or like, is it that surprising that I know somewhat about jewelry, knowing that you know your mother? Eh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, but like, I, I, well, it's not that mom like loves jewelry right. and like has a crazy amount. Of, it's like that she's very particular about right. the jewelry. I, and I've never successfully bought her a, pure, yeah. a piece of jewelry. Yeah. So you've yeah. probably had the whole like, I don't know, whatever. I've had an education in why yeah. I'm bad the, the at The Zales catalog like explained to you. <laughs> oh, Zales has nothing to do with your mother's jewelry. <laughs> oh, well, that actually, yeah, that may be a little below. Yeah. But I don't know why I said Zales. Yes, so. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> Tiffany's. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I'm 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 in theory against jewelry entirely. But but that's another like, to the expense of jewelry. I think you can decorate yourself. But why why play the status game of platinum and and multi carat diamonds and all that kind of stuff? It's silly to me. But I don't know. I have my own other issues about status that I'm I participate in. So you know people mm -hmm. can you know I'm in the pot calling the kettle black. But um, but here's my next question to you, or actually, my is which is actually deeper, and it's not really what I'm thinking of. Although I could do my five things that my father did that was the the best and the worst. But I you asked, should have him on for that. Yeah, I will. But um, uh, I asked you to think about what are some of the things that I've done right and that I've done wrong as a dad. Now that you're, you know, you're a fully fledged adult, you're on your own. You know, kind of. Uh, I mean, you're not ever. Your kid is never really on your own, but 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 you are in control of your own life. And there's nothing I could say to stop you or do anything. You are the boss of your life. Sure. So now that that has happened, and and uh, you turned out to be a pretty good guy, what are the five best things I did as a parent, and five worst things I did as a parent? Mm. I don't know if I can sort of put an exact number of five on it, but well, like, what are but some? I think I, yeah, I have some. Okay. Um, yeah, I did think about it on the drive okay. here. And and also last night. All right. Like, hey, I, I did my homework. I must have been a pretty good parent if you did your homework and got here. Well, I guess I take yeah, some I was here there. 15 minutes early, Dad. Good. Um, I almost Early's on time, I, man. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, and showbiz. Uh, although I, I know plenty of like musician friends who just show up late to things and they're just like, hey, man, like yeah. I just. <laughs> Those are people who aren't professional. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, depends. Um, but. Uh, anyway, uh, I think something that you did right was that you, you told me like, or you sort of made it a point th that I try a lot of different things, like, tr like uh, trying new things, I think generally right. uh, was, is something that you, uh, instilled in me and that I have sort of taken and ran with. Good. Um, I'm, I'm proud of that. That's great. Your life will be more interesting because yeah. of it. I mean, I think generally I'm a, like, I think I'm sometimes a creature of habit, but I think that I have a, a willingness to try things that I don't think you're like, very adventurous I, I, you're, that everyone else has. You've but. been adventurous in terms of, uh, even when you were a little kid, adventurous in terms of food, you're adventurous in terms of travel, you're adventurous in terms of experience. Like, you know, you're willing to sort of go out there. You're willing to, um, you know, put yourself out there and meet people like, you know, you're sort of a schmoozer sometimes when you want to be. <laughs> okay. No, I'm yeah, not I, in a good I, way. I, I think I'm honestly more of a schmoozer in college than I am like at home. Okay. But, but I mean, that's good. <laughs> but, I mean, as long as those schmoozing can also turn into deeper, deepening yeah. good relationships as well. Um, those are, those are great things. And, and, and subject learning subject matter, you know, far and wide. That's a great thing that you can do in college, which is you don't have to just yeah. learn about uh, IR. Yeah. You can learn about or music. You can learn about m a yeah. myriad of things. Yeah. No, those are some of the more interesting classes I've taken, yeah. like psychology or like uh, I, actually the what did I take last. I took a linguistics class. I mean, like I like languages anyway, but right. it's interesting to sort of learn the how rigidly and how scientifically linguists think about language. Yeah, because we just sort of use language every day and it's not we don't think of it as being very we, we use it very fluidly, but they analyze it with such precision. Right. I mean, Noam Chomsky is a linguist. Yeah. Right. I mean, so there you go. It's like one of the great deep thinkers who's kind of a philosopher, but he says he's a linguist. Yeah. You know, that's I, I'm, I'm very proud of as a philosopher, as a somebody who is a philosophy student. Uh, 
a Twitter not without a degree. I did not get a degree at UCLA. Say, in that, philosophy. say that louder for mom. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm a quarter away from my philosophy degree at UCLA, but still, um, okay. I'm, I, I do think language language is, is very telling about what we think of things and how we act in this world. So yeah, I agree. So, okay, so I'm, I'm a winner. Yeah. I win in yeah. terms of uh, trying new things. Yeah, also I think that for a lot of my childhood, especially like when I was really young, I think when I was exploring things, uh, I mean like there were, there were some things that I tried and I didn't like, and there were some things I tried and I liked, but I think sometimes you took th some of those things a little bit further than I maybe would have liked to take them. So I pushed you well, further yeah. into them? Like well, what? I don't know. Well, not push me further, but like, I don't know. I think, uh, well, I think it's appropriate that like sort of when I'm a kid, like I'm, I'm on the steering wheel, but you're on the gas. Right. Um, okay. That's <laughs> kind of how I think of but, it. But I mean, do you have an but example of something that- I, I don't that know. Like I remember like when I was like three years old or four years old and I was like fixated on street signs. Right. And you like arranged a, like a tour of the LA Department of Transportation, like where they make street signs. Right. And then I was kind of like, oh shoot, what is like- <laughs> What is this? <laughs> yeah. What, what did I get myself into? Yeah. A little bit. I mean, not, like now that I'm like 22, I would, I would have loved to go on that. Like, but right. I, at the time I was, I was like four. What, like, right. <laughs> What would I have gotten from that? Uh, I don't um, know, but, but you seem to you seem to be very interested in street signs. So I, I figured, was. I figured uh, whatever you're <laughs> curious about, I wanted yeah. you to be able to dig deeper in. Yeah, no, I would. I, I appreciate that, but okay. I think at the same time, there was a like I think a little bit of was there a stigma? Did people at school make fun of you and say, "Ah, you went to the street sign factory"? Well, I was first. I think I was like maybe worried about that even okay. at that young right. age. Okay, but like I, I also just think I don't know. There were certain they like I, I think like. Sometimes like when I expressed interest in something, you may have sort of like gone a step further than right. I maybe was ready for. Right. It's not about that. I didn't need that step at all, but it was just that I'm I, like, it may have been like a year or two too early. Right. Like, okay. Like, I don't know, like sort of, right. I, I don't know. I think it's sort of taken me a while to cook in certain ways. Yeah, for and sure. I think that, I don't know. I may have been a little too like, I like, yeah. And I, 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 I can freely admit that I had no barometer as to what was age appropriate with a kid who, uh, you know, you were very intelligent little kid and you had a lot of ideas and you expressed them very well. And I didn't know, like, should I treat you like a 12 year old? Should I treat you like a 10 year old? Should I treat you like a three year old? Should I treat like, I didn't know hmm. you, you intellectually were, were smart emotionally. You're still the age your age <laughs> okay. you're at. So it was hard to sort of yeah. gauge, but you're right. I probably made many mistakes. I don't know, but I don't, like, I don't think, like, I don't think you made like criminal mistakes. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying criminal. I'm just saying like, that's a fair, that's a fair criticism. I'm saying yeah. I agree with you. I it's a fair like, criticism. Yeah. I was a little, a little lost in yeah. like, well, what do that's I do fair. with this kid who likes street signs? Yeah, I don't know anybody fair. else who yeah. has, who's a kid who loves street signs. Like, yeah, that. I don't know. To be fair, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a weird time. Also, yeah. I mean, but I'm still interested right. in street that's signs. Right. I, like, I'm not, I, I'm I, not, there's like five different types of street signs in LA. And right. like, I know the difference between, and like, sure, I can tell you when they were like the, the fifties have like the block letter, right. like the ones that were made in like post-war have like the block letters, the ones that are like, from the eighties are trapezoidal. Mm -hmm. The ones from the seventies are like light blue and right. You mind uh, if I say something now? Yeah. Nerd. <laughs> okay. You're such a nerd. I, I, I is, is it bad if I, if I <laughs> bully you now yeah. as a person, uh, as fine. your father? Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, good. Uh, all right. So that's one. I never actually was bullied for the street signs. Was, I was bullied good. for other things, right. but not the street signs. What were you bullied for? Well, I mean, well, I had my nut allergy. Right. Um, and so like, I don't know. There's yeah, people bullied you for your nut allergy, of, that's true. Uh, well, also like, cause I was like moved up a grade when I was like really young. Right. And I think that like, there was, I was a pretty easy kid to pick on. I was like sure. smaller and like, I mean, I was like, I was clearly smart. Cause like I was moved right. up into their, and, like I was younger than all of them. Right. Um, but I think, I don't know. I was like, they, they, they found my weaknesses. Sure. <laughs> well, could. everybody does. Every, every yeah. kid is made fun of for something. So if it wasn't your, yeah. uh, your level of uh, of smarts or your peanut allergy, it would have been something yeah, else. Yeah. So, but, um, so okay. Yeah. So, what else did I do that are either uh, positive or negative? Yeah, I think another positive. Um, I'm like I'm not sure. Actually, maybe it's like a double edged. Like I think a lot of these things are like kind of like like I don't know. Some of them are like mix of positive and negative. Like I think in some way, like maybe something that was like tough at the time right. turned out to sort of teach me a lesson or Ooh, like, what's that what was that 
like I think when you were spending all that time in Vancouver yes. when you're working on the troop, right? Uh, you you would still come home like like you would leave like Sunday night, and um, then you'd come back like Thursday, Thursday or Friday, Thursday, at, night. and like you were and you were always home like on the weekends or like for the most part right. you were home. So not, like I think there were like a few extended. It was one one weekend where I was directing where I was not allowed to come back. I yeah. had to go for the state. But I don't know. But I think that that was that was tough for me. I think when I was like I don't know I must have been like seven or eight or right not, like. But I think it ultimately kind of taught me a lesson, like sort of. I hope it was the was the lesson: don't ever love because you might get hurt. <laughs> no, but just like, <laughs> but I, but oh I, shit! Well, then but that's I mean, not the lesson I was trying to teach. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it was like uh, it, it sort of showed me like one or sort of or like sort of we knew what, like I felt like I still felt your love mm -hmm. even while you were in vancouver right. i think you made it a, a point to sort of be at home while you could right i tried to talk to you on zoom yeah. or skype you didn't really like that so much yeah yeah but i think that that was like i don't know i thought i, th I think and also just sort of like i don't know like I, that may sound like a little like old school but like providing for the family like you right. know, i felt like you were doing this job so that you could yeah. like Sure. provide for us mm -hmm. and you were also there for us uh, like on the weekends when you could be um yeah. and did like you ever think how hard it was to do all that commuting all the time not really <laughs> <laughs> but it was like but i mean how like exhausting I look, it was? but i look back now and i'm yeah. like holy shit yeah. this excuse me yeah uh, this no guy shit. was like then my dad was flying like on two airplane flights a week like i i could like I don't know. I don't think I could even do like two airplane flights a month. Oh, like, yes, you could. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it, was, it was hard. It was hard yeah. to be away from the family. But, you know, it was a it was an yeah. interesting job. And, and uh, I was uh, I did feel bad for being away. But I also felt like um, ultimately it was the, the right thing to do. And yeah. I'm glad you took something away yeah. from that. Which and, I, is... and, then, and then there are other periods of my life where you were like almost two around. So right. <laughs> it was okay. like made up for it. Well, what, <laughs> so, what were those periods? I don't know. Like, I think there were a couple of, like in high school, like. Right. I don't know. Just, I mean, there were a couple times like after a show had ended or like mm -hmm. after, like you were just kind of like around <laughs> like, oh, lingering in the backstage when you just sort of wanted to just hang out with your friends. Not even, not even that. Like just kind of and, uh, like, I'm not, I wasn't complaining that you're around, but I don't know. No, you can complain. That's why I'm here to hear the complaints. This is what the show <laughs> but, uh, like, is. The show is not interesting. If you're just, you're a great dad, the show is interesting know, only like, if yeah. you've fucked up here's how you fucked me dad uh, this is how you really you screwed me up this is the thing that really pissed me okay. off um so yeah no i want to yeah, hear no, that but i don't like i don't know i i just feel like there are a couple times where i like i don't know i think there were like a couple times when i was like maybe like 16 17 where yep. it's just like like a, like dad's always here god damn it like yeah. just like <laughs> not i don't even know what i was like uh, like what i was like wanted to do that right. made me feel that way but just like it like the, whatever I felt like you weren't around when I was like seven or eight, right. I felt like you were too around in like right. 16 or seven. Okay. That's um, true. Well, I did, you know, just before you got your driver's license or your car, like, you know, I was taking you to school. I was yeah. around for that yeah. kind of stuff. I don't know. So, I don't know. Yeah. But I kind of, but I appreciated that. Yeah. I, it wasn't. I, I love that. I mean, yeah, that, I, was, I actually selfishly, that yeah. was one of the great yeah. things I had. And I, and I actually enjoyed that, but I think it was more just kind of like, I don't know. I, like, I don't even I, like, I'm struggling to like find a specific example, okay. but like there was something that I do remember feeling for All a little right, that's, bit. That's 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 fair. Uh, but, that's fair. Um, I'm sorry if I was around too much, but um, <laughs> but or in your way, I really do. I do feel for that. I feel like I came from parents, my mother specifically, who was in the way sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. who was their need. Her need outweighed my yeah. Yeah. you know ability to sort of be independent and grow. Yeah. Well, I don't think, you, but you weren't like sort of needy in any way it was just kind of like oh he's around like it was like i don't think you were like i don't i don't, I don't feel like you were ever n needy or demanding in the same way that nana is right <laughs> but maybe right. well that's a whole other episode. yeah that's nana yeah. nana's a whole bring, other bring, bring nana sue on the podcast Ooh, yes, we will have her we'll have she, that yeah. yes she's not she's not coming up those stairs i'll tell you that much oh, yeah. so okay so uh around too little around too much but I, like, what what else what else did i do that sort of like was there any standout thing both positive you can give me a little uh compliment sandwich yeah. you know remember yeah. remember from yeah from little league you yeah. have to do a compliment sandwich well, little league was a compliment sandwich little league Actually, little, yeah. little league you were supposed to do four four good things or three good things and one criticism okay as, as a coach when i was a coach so yeah. I was supposed to Actually, say I was going to like I, I knew Little League was going to come up at some point because okay. because a lot of a lot of my 
like like a lot of lessons and a lot of qualms from, right. from Little League. Okay, so let's talk. That's what, <laughs> we've opened we've opened the Little League box. Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so I think when you were a Little League coach, I think you, I mean, for better or for worse, kind of instilled a, like a sense of we're not playing to win. We're playing to like have fun mm -hmm. and and sort of work as a team. Right, and get better. Yeah, get better, improve. Right. Like yep. <laughs> I, I always feel a little odd about the whole like most improved trophy at the end of the year. Right, right. right. <laughs> I remember. I don't know. I don't know how that person's supposed to feel. Um, but, you know, <laughs> they're supposed to feel good that they worked hard and they yeah. improved. Yeah, yeah I don't that's know. pretty good. But because uh, like Harvard Westlake also gave like a most improved, like yeah. or essentially what amounted to be a most improved. Right, but they, but they didn't the believe in that. Like, I don't, they but, only they yeah. only believed in excellence. Yeah, but in winning. I, anyway, that's yeah. Um, but I do think that. Well, that, let's go back. Harvard Westlake, you chose to go to one of the most competitive schools in your city. You went to a very tough, yeah. pressure filled school that now is like you know getting flack because a lot of kids are killing themselves because of the pressure. Like yeah. literally, you're having this yeah. thing. Why did you think you chose? To put yourself in that pressure cooker. Yeah. Well, at the time, I don't know. I was only like eleven or twelve when I made that decision. Right. But I kept telling <laughs> you, you know, anytime you want to get out of here, you can. I said that a bunch of times. I think for whatever reason, I felt like, I don't know. Well, I was like, I definitely felt very smart in elementary school, and everyone was telling me at that time, like, for whatever reason, like, oh, like you'll do great at Harvard Westlake. Mm -hmm. You'll like, and so I, I kind of, I bought into that okay. a little bit. Um, and like just kind of people feeling like I would like I wouldn't have any problem at a school like that. Well, and you didn't have too many I, academic no, problems, I didn't have, but, too. I, but I struggled. I like everything yeah. like was difficult, but right. it, like it's not not a thing that I couldn't overcome. Right. Or, but it, I definitely worked. It was challenging. It, they I worked said, hard. They said you'd be challenged and you were challenged. Yeah. And I think I but I think I kind of felt like if I did that now, it would make the rest of my life easier <laughs> in some ways. And and do what do you think? Well, it's definitely made college quite not easy, but like easier. Right. Like I can I can crank out a, a five page paper in a night, no problem. Right. Um, <laughs> don't professors, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, you can tell they're typos. Yeah, right. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think and and just kind of being able to to process information in a very like like drinking from a fire hose kind of way. I feel like Harvard was like trained me for that. So good decision. That was good. That was your decision. Yeah. That was good and decision. I think honestly, I think and also whatever like artistic stuff that I felt like maybe wasn't supported by Harvard was like, well, which I was in jazz band. I was in right. choir, but I wasn't going to be a professional chorister for the rest right. of my life. But I felt like it supported the things that I wound up ultimately wanting to do. But I also appreciated that I could sort of do the things I wanted to do outside of the Harvard Westlake structure. Right. Right. Like, and I don't think Crossroads kids or other private schools in Los Angeles that it were more arts, artsy feeling. I don't know that those kids had a, a leg up artistically. I don't know. You know, I mean, it, well, you think I they know. did? Well, no, not, not necessarily, but I think that at, or at least like at my year, like I think it kind of comes and goes in waves. Like I think it depends on the group of kids. Some some classes are more artistic than others. Some like I think the class below me seemed a little bit more artistic. Right. The class above me didn't really seem so. Like I think it, it kind of comes and goes in waves at Harvard Westlake. I think at Crossroads, I think people definitely take their artistic pursuits. They they have a level of gravitas. Right. Or at least that's what I get from uh the the, the jazz the like the jazz competitions that I was at in high school, like the Monterey next gen jazz, uh, like the Harvard, like <laughs> basically what like love, love Mr. C, Mr. Constantino. Right. But I felt like, oh God, if he, if he listens to this, no, but <laughs> no, good to but, I, but I think that um, be authentic, be yeah. what you feel. No, but I think that like he put it, he really had an emphasis of just like us flexing on like, like 240 beats per minute songs, right? Pl like playing a bunch of like crazy eighth note solos, right. like right. like uh, like just stuff that you wouldn't be like you would have to like hear at half speed, right. To process fully, right. Whereas and I and I feel like I didn't like that at the time. I think I wanted to sort of do more like, right. Uh, I, I it was I cared more about the like sort of structured solo and building it out and not right. just like. 
That's, showing off you my didn't chops. want the fireworks i mean but, I, well, uh, the fireworks didn't hurt but i feel like you build up to the fireworks if okay. you can all right but he's trying to win awards he's yeah, trying to win sure. competition yeah and i think that yeah and that was his strategy right and i respected that right and i learned how to right. and so I, I i learned how to do that to some extent i, I Mm -hmm. uh, not as good as okay. some other kids, but I think. But when I listen to the Crossroads kids play, they they were taking their time. Right. And they were they were sort of playing things very tastefully. I mean, not that like, not not that taste is what wins that competition, but just kind of like I felt like they had a level of sophistication, sort of, you know, sophistication, sort of like like they sort of thought like thoughtfulness right and how they played which i appreciate but it's still all just jazz mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's still tw it's still 14 year old kids playing jazz yeah so well, i remember well, you went to one of my jazz concerts because like there were a couple of jazz um cohorts at my high school and like i sort of worked my way up from like the sort of like beginner level to like right. the most advanced level. And I remember you went to one of those concerts and you were like the like the beginning bands play music I love terribly <laughs> and the and the best of the, the advanced bands play music I hate well, <laughs> which so, is true. Yeah. It's terrible cuz like they were playing like like they're playing like some like old like sort of Sinatra -y right. standards classic like, standards ruining them <laughs> yeah. and then the older ones are playing a really esoteric felonious monk songs and just yeah. like and that that, that that I didn't love yeah. and just and, but but playing them well it's yeah, yeah. It was, but know. you know but that was but I don't know I will say the jazz did give me an interesting skill set uh like I think I got a lot better on piano because of it I think I sort of learned to listen to you music to a little good, bit differently to be good at presenting something that people dislike so that's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, all right. Well, before we get on, move on to the uh, just one more thing. Uh, is there one overall thing if you could have changed, you know, will, ma magic wand, J dad, if you didn't do X, you know, yeah. it would have been really helpful yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, I, well, or still, or still, also, to, we, to still this day. we still didn't come back to Little League. Oh, yeah. Little <laughs> come back. Talk about, about Little League. Yeah. No, but As Little League. coach. Was I, I think, was that miserable? No, I think you, uh, you were a good coach. I think people liked you. I think, but I do think that at a, at some point, I think I maybe should have cared more about winning than I did. Well, you made that decision for yourself when you quit Little League. You said, I don't care whether we win or not. And other people here do. Yeah. But I, but at some point, I kind of wish I, I like, but looking back, I kind of wish I had begun to care. Like, I feel like I didn't really like I didn't realize how results oriented I was until like junior year of high school. Uh -huh. Like, okay. I think I was like, I don't think but I was like results oriented in the things I knew that I was good at. Okay. Like, but and I mean, I, not that I would like to be fair. I was like, I was decent at baseball. I don't think I would have like gone to play mm, it professionally. No, but. you wouldn't have been professional, but you were very good at that level. You were a very good uh, player. You had a great arm. You were a great first baseman. You were a very good outfielder. You were a great third baseman and you were a pretty decent pitcher. A weird, a weird ass pitcher, but very decent. Weird. Yeah. Your <laughs> skill, your skill set was throwing some off speed pitches that were very fascinating and struck out people all the time. I think part of it was because you didn't want to throw too hard at people because you were afraid you were going to hit them. Yeah. And so you threw some I weird took pride in only hitting one batter <laughs> <laughs> off speed pitches that really is like confused the batters a lot. Yeah. I, and it was very interesting because I didn't want to be like, because I feel like people were scared of those pitchers that would like hit the bat. Like they're like, oh, like I heard Adam hit like three right. batters last game. Like <laughs> I didn't want to be like that. Right. No. I, wanted, I wanted to. Uh, I, I, it was a pride thing. Yeah, well, um, you were great. But, I really enjoyed watching you. Yeah. I have, I have highlights. There are highlights, certain yeah. plays, but also just yeah. you doing a somersault as you oh, yeah. uh, came in for a home oh, yeah. run. Well, the other coach got mad at me for that. Uh, like he was like, "No showboating on the field." You know what? Doing a doing a uh, was a cartwheel. Yeah, a, was cartwheel, a cartwheel. A cartwheel as you got into home run when you're a little kid having the time of your life was the best yeah. one of the best no, memories I, I ever I, saw. Yeah, life. but I do think. I don't know. I, I do think fuck it, that other coach for saying that's not yeah. fun. But I do think I, something that I've been thinking about a lot recently, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's really your fault, yep. <laughs> but it's just something that I don't think I maybe it's because I'm an only child. Yeah. Like, I think I, I sort of like individuality versus teamwork. Oh, I think I tend to sort of do things more on my own than mm -hmm. with a team right. for better or for worse. Right. Uh, I and I don't know if that's because I'm an only child or because like, but I think even in Little League, I feel like the the lessons of teamwork weren't fully like instilled in me. Like it was kind of just like do your best, right? And that's kind of what I got from that, and not as much like but cooperate. I mean, you had to be cooperative, yeah. But to it was make sort of like, 
Yeah, I mean, like I felt like I was I, I was cooperating, but it, like mm-hmm. I didn't really. It seems like jazz band and choir and all those group activities would have instilled some sense of teamwork. Yeah, I, I think like jazz band was probably the the most teamy I felt right. in my. <laughs> is that's, uh, yeah. No, I think like jazz band was sort of the most cooperative, collaborative right. uh, thing that I had experienced up to that point. Um, I mean, one of the problems with cooperation in, at that level of the little league is like none of these. This is not your. You did not choose this team. Yeah, this team is just a randomly assigned yeah. team, and so yeah, that's not true. everybody. But, but jazz is but like at least like school jazz band was kind of. I guess so, but there was a there was a merit based. Yeah, uh, assuming is mostly merit based. Uh, you know, position in the top yeah. bands or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying I didn't deserve to be in the top? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm saying I'm. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying that about baseball necessarily, yeah. but I'm no, just saying I, that that you made a bit. You you usually made the All Star team or the Eagle team, whatever it was, each year. But you that baseball wasn't your thing. Yeah, no, for sure, baseball was not. Yeah, your thing. but I I don't know. But I think also like when you were or when you were a kid, when I was a kid, I think like something that you. Uh, like used to say like the four P's or, yeah. or was it the three P's one of the, one of the four P's was just P because I wasn't peeing a lot at school <laughs> right uh, I was but scared was to go play, to the bathroom uh, uh, play participate <laughs> yeah play participate and pay attention yeah and I feel like participate was always the one that I struggled a little bit with right okay. and I felt like because I, at some point I kind of felt like my way of participating was just kind of like giving of myself without really sort of thinking much about it but it wasn't it was less about like interacting and more about just kind of like hey right. Right. here it's like well, now <laughs> now at 22 i hope you participate i hope you're interactive yeah i think i'm, I'm better at that okay. but, I, but i also think like artistically i feel like i have a tendency to sort of want to do things like i'm like the little red hen in the right. in the face like i want to i want to do it myself well if you'll uh, take this observation i think part of it is your sense of control like you want to you want to have control over the thing and sometimes you don't realize what you get out of a collaboration yeah you lose some control but you get something else yeah a different sure. uh, uh yeah a different end product and a different experience yeah i don't know and i think i was able to sort of like i think maybe also i think it's different because i think with jazz the, like sort of improv and sort of like lack or not i mean you're in control to some extent but a lot of it is out of your control right. and i feel like i was able to just sort of accept that with jazz so charlie but with Kogan, songwriting yeah i that's, was like i felt very much in control you are now a songwriter you're a very talented songwriter singer as a matter of fact i'm gonna have us insert a song here um that you did uh that i don't know which song it'll be probably either millions or uh or night and cargo yeah. shorts and, your choice okay uh two of your latest singles and so the audience can get a sense of who you are what is this all for do you do it for yourself or is there something more you got a million people lining up to bow and kiss your feet and another million people making plans to steal your seat make a million faces smile a million dreams come true there's only one of you I can spend a million dollars making castles in the sand Spend a million hours trying, but I'll never understand There's a million things you are that I may never be And there's only one of me Charlie Kogan is available to be listened to at what? At Charlie Kogan on Spotify? Yeah, Charlie Kogan, C-H-A-R-L-I-E space K-O-G-E-N. You might also see my 
uh, use Spotify user profile in addition to my artist profile. So make sure it's the artist. Although I do make some right. pretty good playlists. So it's uh, but you're on Amazon and you're Apple yeah, and all. I'm, the on, I'm, all, I'm on all the streamers. Right. Uh, and you have a new song coming out? Yes, I do. I don't know when it will be released relative to when this airs, but uh, like. Probably like sometime in October. Maybe. Okay. Well, my guess is this will the, the song will be released by the time this airs. Um, how do you feel about artistically your your growth as an artist? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, like, I definitely feel like I don't know. I mean, like, I feel like I just kind of write what I write, like at least with, with songs. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how much I've really grown. I feel like I try to I try to make things different. Like right. I, I like when I sit down to write a song, I'm like, oh, that sounds too much like something else I wrote. Like I, I try to I try to make it as though. What's more important, being different or saying something? Saying something. OK, I, think. I mean, so would you I, sacrifice being different if if you had to repeat yourself, but you thought that was the right way to say something? It really hit. hit yeah, something. I think I would do that. Good. I, but I think saying, yeah, saying something is more important. But yeah, I like, because I, I think like there are a lot of bands and a lot of artists that like reuse the same phrases. And, right. Like, <laughs> I think of uh, yeah, terrible bands like the Eagles and and uh, Bruce Springsteen and, you know, <laughs> Tom but Petty. I, I, but like, I, I, I don't know. I, but I feel like a lot of the like Bruce Springsteen, like I love Bruce Springsteen. But as we've talked, like he's the, he's the kind of artist where it feels like if he, if you were if you learned that he wrote all of his songs in the same day, you wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it's absolutely true. He does sound like, like he comes from a very specific groove that's that has unchanged for many, many yeah, years. Like no disrespect. Like he's great. Right. But I think like I try to if, make things like within my own catalog. I try to make things diverse as right. I can. It'll be it, it, if you go to Charlie Cogan and, and see his work, it, it does sound like it's been written by 12 different people. So the, there's that 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 may be good or bad. I don't yeah, know. I think it's but like I think. Yeah. It's, part of me wants to really be like a chameleon mm -hmm. and sort of like sort of like, oh, I can write a country song, but I can also write a soul song and I can also write a like a hooky like 2023 pop song. Right. And you um, can and you do. That's but I great. think like. But there's another part of me that's sort of like I, I like a lot of the artists that I admire are also quite like idiosyncratic in their own ways, right. <laughs> like I don't know, like Randy Newman or somebody like that, or right. or the Beach Boy, like Brian Wilson. Yeah, very like sort of he's sort of built his own sonic palette. Very, right. uh, <laughs> but very he uses firmly. the same chords or the same yeah, harmonies, that's what I'm and yeah, yeah, like he, like his sonic palette is very yeah recognizable. Right. Um, but I don't know. I, but I think that I. But I do think I've grown. I think also as I've experienced more life in general. Mm -hmm. I think I've grown as an artist, and I think like sometimes I hope that like one doesn't get in the way of the other. Like it all. My fatherly advice to you, even if I wasn't your father, I'd say every bit of your experience will be funneled through your work as an artist, and it's good. All that extra experience is good yeah. and, and makes you seasoned and grow. And and there's no yeah. there's no downside to yeah. any of that. That's great. Yeah. And also, I do see you becoming a better, not just songwriter, but also producer. Like your abilities as a producer is uh, grown exponentially over the years. So yeah, all no. that's all yeah, that's I think great. a lot of that is just trial and error. Yeah. Like if this. you were if you were shitty, it'd be very easy for me to say, don't go into music. Like, you I mean, be, would you be having me on this podcast? Uh, or no, I, well, I'm probably I may if you were interesting, I'd have you on. Okay. But if you were shitty as a musician, <laughs> okay. uh, I don't think I would be recommending your music. And I'd probably be telling you, think about other things yeah. just for your own good. Yeah, study, but, like go into the spy business. Right. But you're very yeah. interesting and melodic and wonderful. And, and yeah. you know, there's music that I respect. So I, I like well, that. Means, that means a lot to me. Yeah. Just, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't told you this for the rest of your entire life. That he's 22. Yeah, you, this is my, the first moment yeah. I've ever given a compliment. My dad's been holding this for me. All, <laughs> uh, no, no. You, tell, like, you tell me a lot. I'm a I, fan. I, he knows I'm a fan. But I really is, yeah. do, I sincerely mean it. And I would be sincere if, uh, if I didn't like something and if I haven't liked something, I've said that's not good or I don't like yeah. it or, you know not that I'm the judge of anything I'm just yeah. giving my opinion yeah I don't know but I but, definitely think also just going back to the whole like anxiety question yeah. like I think part of what I don't have anxiety but like part of what gives me hope is that like all we have are ideas right like all we have are just kind of like like the the world, the creative economy runs on ideas. Right. That's and, right. And if, as long as you have ideas, you have something. A hundred percent. And I, and I, and I feel like as long as I can write songs, as long as I can like 
put a record a guitar the like a riff that I like like I I won't be uh, like I don't know it's some, yeah, I'll it's have worth, something it is worth something I, I, I totally agree and I think like I was listening to like an insta uh, listen I I'm a little old school I I I watch Instagram reels and not TikTok uh wow. for the most part all right grandpa yeah i know <laughs> um, yeah come at me in the right. comments right um i'm on tiktok apparently according to my phone i'm on tiktok tiktok about 23 hours a day mm. that may be too much yeah that's a lot like yeah, 23 23 hours a day yes okay. according to my phone okay are you sure you're not like a bot or something <laughs> not sure uh, anyway but um but there's some instagram reel i think maybe it was like pharrell or somebody talking mm -hmm. about like a piece of advice that he got early on in his career. He said, like somebody said, don't try it. Don't try to write hit songs. Just try to write great songs or try to write good songs. Like yeah. hits come and go, but like sort of, you'll always have a good song. Like people will always come back to that. And I feel like I, f and I feel like there's something I like about that. Cause I feel like the nature of like the business is very like ephemeral and like, or sort of what's popular and what, is yeah. like what people like but i feel like as long as you like something and as long as you feel good about your idea right. like that's it's worth that's all you have like that's uh, all you need and uh, whether yeah. people like it that's sort of like a secondary rick rubin concern. said something very similar he said that basically it's an offering it's creative offering to the gods of creativity like you are giving something your best thing is the thing that you love and you're offering it up may nobody else may like it but as long as you like it you've got something and I agree with that. You'll always have that song. You'll always have that thing. It may be in the trunk for 20 years, but it may be pulled out and become something later on. It may always have a use, but make the best thing you can. That's 100% uh, true. And Pharrell, I've gone to Pharrell for all my life advice. So I'm glad yeah. that he yeah. helped you in this particular one. Incredible medical diagnostician. People don't know that. Yeah. He found a, 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 a suspicious lump on my leg one time. It was amazing. <laughs> God bless Pharrell. Yeah, but his, his, his sense of hats didn't really rub off on No, you. no. Thank God. Uh, so I have two more. Uh, I'm going to go to question time. Okay. Okay. So here's the theme of question time. It's question time. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to say that we're running too long for question time. So we, hear the, we heard the theme, but we're not going to do the questions because uh, too many questions and we're running long. Uh, yep. So now we're just going to go right to listener mail. Okay, here's the listener mail theme. Now it's time for listener mail. Very nice. All all my themes, the music on the show is, of course, created by Charlie Kogan. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I know that... Some of my best work. Just to, just to be clear, I asked Charlie for cheesy music. This is not... This is not Charlie approved music. This is Jay Kogan approved Although, music. Uh, but I wanted to make it like tastefully cheesy. It's like, beautiful. I, I, I love it. But I, I'm just saying like, it's not necessarily, yeah. you, it's not something yeah. that you uh, sweat it out. It is the Bruce Springsteen did it all in one day kind of feel. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I did do it all in one day. <laughs> right. Well, actually, well, the, well, the theme is, was recorded much earlier. Right. And, yeah. Anyway. All good. All right. But now we're going to go right to listener mail. So we just played the listener mail theme and here's today's listener mail. Hey, Jay. Where does your life fulfillment come from in terms of writing? Is it being able to earn a living, living a creative lifestyle, or both? How was fulfillment? Uh, how has fulfillment and its meaning changed over the years? Best, Joey. Um, uh, Joey, uh, by the way, is the guy who also drew. I think this Joey is the guy who drew the Simpsons Homer Simpson strike shirt. Oh, the same that's awesome. same Joey. Um, I have, we, yeah, I, I have that shirt. I think it is. Anyway, I'm not positive. Anyway, so what is your answer to this? Where does your life fulfillment come from in terms of being a creative? Is it from being able to earn a living or is it just being able to do it or both? Well, I, I haven't earned a living yet doing it. Right. So I think right now it comes from doing it. Could you but. Conce conceivably be a dentist and still make music? Would you still make music if you were a dentist? Probably. I think and I would, would still like sit down at the piano and tr and play stuff. I think I, like I don't know how how invested or like excited I would be about it, but I think right. Like I think that might change. So part for you, part of it is sitting down and making a song and producing it is the thought that this could catch. This could be something. This yeah. is this is part of my oeuvre and hopefully yeah. will amount to something career-wise. Yeah, or at least kind of like or there's like a hope there that like sort of someone that I don't know or someone that I like or someone that doesn't know that I'm a musician will hear this and like it. Right. Like <laughs> that's that, that I think that gives me fulfillment. 
I have an interesting thing. Like the, for me, writing, I don't. It's very hard for me to write if I'm not getting paid. Mm. So I would say that just writing for the love of writing is not what I do. I write and have written for years and years and years, mostly to get paid. Yeah. But also, I do like writing and I do like the creative satisfaction of writing ideas and making something. But but without the thought I'm going to get paid or without the thought it was a deadline, I probably wouldn't do it. I'm much more likely to do something like this, a podcast where I'm social, I'm around people or mm -hmm. improv or stand up comedy where you know, can hear people laugh. I'm much like more likely to do that because at least I get a a sense of belonging a sense societal i'm not as isolated it's 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 less painful for me yeah um i mean i feel like i could probably make music in a more social manner mm -hmm. like i just sometimes don't i think, I think you also should. i think also the pandemic kind of like i feel like the the pen i kind of use the pandemic as an opportunity to learn how to do stuff myself right and um, you did and you have but it's nothing wrong with now yeah. branching out yeah but i think yeah but i don't think like i would necessarily be like writing and producing as like or sort of painstakingly producing as much as I do if I were a dentist. Right. Like, I think I would still be like writing ideas for songs, but I don't really know what I would be doing with them. If you were a dentist, would you have your own music piped into the room while people are getting their teeth cleaned? I don't know. That's tough. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I've met too <laughs> Wouldn't many- Wouldn't it be great? You're I've, met, I've met too many dentists with like odd secondary interests <laughs> that are like, uh, like, and a lot of them, a lot of the time they're like music or like guitar aficionados right. or like music aficionados. Uh, Does that make them bad dentists? No, but it's just like, I, I don't know. I don't like, I, I don't know, I, but, <laughs> but it just like, I don't know. I feel like they if I were, if I were going to me as a dentist right. who were doing that, I would, it would rub me the wrong way right. in a way that's like even more extreme than like how sort of like the, the gold records on some doctor's offices around here kind of also rub me the wrong way. I kind of like that the idea you're just like drilling into somebody's tooth is like, you hear that riff? That's me. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's kind of thing. That'd be yeah. Nice. Um, also, but like, I don't know, but there are people that sort of do that have very successful other careers and then they decided to like, I think of the Goldman Sachs guy who got into trouble over the pandemic for like being a DJ. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but did he get in trouble or did he well, just get noted, noticed for it? Well, I think he was in trouble because it was like an unmasked event in like the Hamptons or like, okay. it, yeah. like in like August of 2020. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, hey man, you're- He has you're, like 12 different versions of Rescue Me by Fontella Base. Your fake demic is over. All right. You know, now we, we're free to be yeah, ourselves. John, yeah. I, I only really know about this guy from John Oliver, but, <laughs> but, 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 but I think right. that, but there are other people, like, I think I, some of my like finance people might wind up working for this guy. So yeah, that's true. My, like my finance friends. Um, well, Charlie Cogan, <laughs> thank you for being here. This has been fascinating and interesting. Um, yeah, I apologize. I apologize for all the th mistakes I've made. Yeah, and so uh, many, so terrible. So many. <laughs> and I love you very dearly. And uh, yes. but you know that. And yeah, I love you too. It's Dad. great. Ah, oh, thanks, buddy. And I'm a big fan and big fan. And you all, any listeners I have, should be li big fans of Charlie Cogan. Um, just because he's great and you should give his music yeah. a sample and see what see what you not think. just because i'm a nepo baby no no nepo baby only gets you in the door baby yeah then you gotta get yeah. uh, i'll say this is played. like the, this is the only time i well, actually well not the only time but like this is one of a very few times recently where i've been proud to be like a nepo baby a little bit is like, that right yeah okay because like, there's a big stigma around it but right. like if I can get onto a, a podcast with my dad, yeah. uh, that's like it's, it's, it's time one, well spent. It's one of the great Norman Walkwell paintings. Yeah. Son and father at podcast. Mm. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm glad that you're proud. I'm proud of you, of everything you do. And uh, can't wait to see more from you, both in your creative work and your international relating. Mm. I'm very excited to see what comes of that. Uh, yeah. And uh, thank you to the podcast viewers and listeners. You guys are great. If you have any uh, email that you want to shoot me, it's D-B-A-W-J-A-Y-K-O-G-E-N at gmail.com. Uh, and uh, we'll be back next week with another amazing show. And thanks for listening. Hi, I'm here at the Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan Meditation Garden and Nature Preserve to let you know the interview you just watched was recorded in 2023 and now it's 2024. And the song that Charlie was talking about has been released and it's available on Amazon and Spotify and Apple and all the cool music platforms where artsy pop music is available. So here's a taste of Charlie Hogan's new song, Life of the Party of One. Two, one, two.